Hi, this is Kelly from 1, 2 plus me and you and today I'm going to show you what's for dinner. I'm going to be making some vegetarian enchiladas and I'm going to start off with the stuffing or the things that you would put inside the tortilla shells and what you're going to need is some cumin. Um, this actually at the store said ground comino, C-O-M-I-N-O. -O. So if you're having a hard time finding it for whatever reason, this is the same thing. You'll also need a um, can of black beans. This is 15.25 ounces or 432 grams. Um, for the cumin, you're going to need a teaspoon. For corn, it's best, in my opinion, to just get the frozen, um, the frozen corn. And what you're going to be using out of this is about 10 um, to 12 ounces. So this is a 16 ounce bag. So you're going to be using a little bit more than half of it. Um, you need one small onion, one bag of shredded cheese, and I tend to put all my cheese in the freezer. You also need a package of chopped spinach and two small or medium size um, sweet potatoes. We really like sweet potatoes, so these might seem a bit larger than what you might want to use, but for us, I, I like to have that extra, um, in a way, this is kind of like the meat of, of the enchilada because it really makes you feel full. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a, a good extra thing. This is kind of a spinoff of Martha Stewart's vegetarian enchiladas, but I change things a little bit by um, not using um, the pepper jack cheese. I use the shredded cheese and then um, I also add sweet potatoes. Another thing um, that I'll be adding is peppers. Um, I dry my own peppers so I'm going to be using some of those. And what I usually do is I'll, um, whenever I see red peppers on special at the grocery store, sometimes I even grow them in my own garden, um, I'll bring them home and dehydrate them. And then I save them in a ball jar. And this jar, it's pretty um, secure, so they, they, they stay in here. And they're actually kind of sweet. So instead of using the pepper jack cheese, I like to use the regular um, Italian mozzarella cheese, um, but, you can also use a Mexican cheese, which might actually even taste a little bit better. But then um, I will put in uh, maybe about a, a tablespoon or two tablespoons of, of these um, just to give it some flavor. And the, the difference between these and red pepper flakes, red pepper flakes will make it spicy. You could do that if you wanted a little extra kick. But these will make it sweet and give it kind of that peppery taste without being too spicy. So. Um, that's something extra that I will add to the stuffing. So what you want to do is combine these into a large bowl and um, then you'll be ready to fill the tortilla shells. First, first I'm going to go ahead and start with the beans. Um, you don't want to just dump the beans in there. Um, in my opinion, it's best if you give them a little bit of a rinse. Um, considering all the I want to say bean residue that gets left behind. So again, next we're going to be adding the corn. So we want to do a little bit more than half the bag. I buy the frozen spinach. This I has been thawing in my sink. And what I need to do is make sure I squeeze out all the extra water before I put it in. You don't want to just open up a frozen spinach and throw it in the bowl. That doesn't work. It needs to be thawed out. But again, when you thaw spinach, it um, it's very wet so you want to get as much of that extra water out and again I might throw it in my um, my strainer here in the sink and then just kind of squeeze the water out so I'll take it out of the package and put it in here and I'll probably just press down because there's a lot of water going to be coming off of this um, and that would be the easiest way to keep the spinach, but to get rid of the water. Okay, now my spinach is in there. And again, you know, it never really seems like there's as much spinach as everything else. But spinach does have kind of a strong flavor. 
Um, it's somewhat of an odd texture for some people. Not everybody likes it. My five-year-old loves spinach, but my two-year-old not so much. So it's actually kind of a good thing that there's not as much spinach as everything else. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and dump a package of cheese in. Um, you could save a little bit of this, maybe put in, uh, maybe put in a cup and a half. So the the bag is two and a half, or is two cups. So maybe you're putting in three quarters of the bag, and um, I'll chop that up in a second. And then you can leave the rest of the cheese to put on top of the enchiladas. Um, I never do that, but that's something that you could do. The next thing I am going to add is the onion. So I've gone ahead and chopped it up. Um, some people don't like onions. I actually never really used to cook with onions until I had kids. Um, Martha's recipe calls for scallions, but I um, never buy them. I don't know. And we always have white onions on hand, um, so that's what I'm going to be using. I've used green onions before when you just go out and buy a bunch of those, and I use every single one. Um, maybe that's like six green onions or something. That tastes that tastes pretty good. Or I've actually used leeks. If you go out and buy one decent size leek, um, that tastes pretty good. I love cooking with leeks uh, more so than anything else in the onion family. So. I think if I had a leek, I would use one. But I have onions, so I'm going to be using onions. So that's the uh, that's the next thing that you're going to add. And then you're going to want to add your cumin. So again, you'll want to um, you're going to be using a little bit more cumin when you're making the sauce that goes over on top. But right now, for just the filling, you're going to use one teaspoon of this. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add my dried red pepper. You could use fresh red pepper or yellow pepper. Um, often at times I might use some fresh sweet peppers, um, but I'm just gonna add some of these. This long one I will probably cut up or um, I won't use it all, but I'm just going to use a little bit here um, and it's strictly your own preference how much you want to use but it adds a little bit of flavor next you're going to want to take your sweet potatoes um, and make sure that you poke them with forks all around i actually did it with a knife just because i had one handy you're going to put them in the microwave for about 10 minutes just to get them softened up while your sweet potatoes are cooking in the microwave you can go ahead and make the sauce so I'm going to take a medium to large saucepan and put it on the stove. And inside, I am going to be using some ingredients that are very similar to what Martha uses in her sauce, um, except for she includes vegetable broth. I use this better than bouillon instead, which is a paste that you add to water. So um, instead of buying 38 cans, 38 servings, of vegetable broth, I buy one of these and just use the, a spoonful of the paste as I need to. So what I'm going to be using with this instead of the 14 and a half ounces of vegetable broth that I need, I'm going to be using um, roughly two teaspoons of this. Um, and then of course I'm going to be using about 16 ounces of water. I might actually use a little bit more than that um, because I think when I made the sauce before with Martha's recommendations, it didn't feel like there was enough. Um, I, we like to have a little bit more sauce, so um, I might actually use two and a half, um, two and a half teaspoons of that, um, and then I would need about 20 ounces of water to go with that. So in my saucepan first, I'm going to take two tablespoons of the um, olive oil and I'm going to go ahead and put that into the saucepan, heat that up a little bit. Then I'm going to add two teaspoons of ground um, cumin, or this is uh, comino, it's the same thing. And then I am going to use about a half a cup of flour. 
So once my oil and cumin have been heated up, then I'm going to add a half a cup of flour to that. And I'm going to get a, um, a whisk, uh, and I'm going to actually whisk in the tomato paste. Martha's recipe also calls for a fourth a cup of tomato paste. Um, again, I'm going to be adding a little bit more, and I'm going to actually be adding more tomato paste. So I'm going to use pretty much this entire thing. Um, this would be about three-fourths of a cup. Um, so you would really only be using one-third of this in the original recipe, but I'm going to be using close to the entire thing. So again, just my own personal spin on it. Um, and I'm going to get that all mixed up and whisk together before adding anything else. Again, I um, added about two and a half teaspoons of the paste and I added about two and a half cups of water to that. And again, two and a half cups of water. If you're thinking milliliters, it's just shy of 600 milliliters of water that you'll be adding. But again, if you're using vegetable broth, you'll want to use about oh, about 20 um, about 20 uh, ounces. So with cans, that could be uh, if you're using eight ounce cans, then that could be two and a half cans. But it's up to you. So this is thickening up quite nicely and once you have this the right consistency as you can see it's boiling again maybe another five minutes uh, or so um, and then we're going to put it aside and finish the filling of the enchiladas you're about ready to get your sweet potatoes out of the microwave so go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees now my sweet potatoes finished a little bit early um, while I was making my sauce, so I just left them to cool. Um, the peel will just come right off, and that's what you want to do next is to take off the peel. You can actually just rub it off. You could use a knife, whatever. This is still a bit warm, so maybe a knife would be in the best, the best um, option. But once you get the skin off, um, then you'll just kind of cut this in slices and throw it into your bowl. Okay, as you can see, I cut up those two sweet potatoes. Remember I had two um, that I cooked in the microwave and I'm gonna use a potato masher just to kind of mash them up a little bit. Um, you don't, if you don't have a potato masher, it's fine. You can, you know, just smush it with a fork, but I'm gonna do this just to make sure that they're all soft and um, blend it in and then I'm just going to use a spoon to um, completely stir it up and once I do that then I'm ready to transfer them to the tortillas. Depending on how full you want your enchiladas you will want to get um, perhaps two packages if you're buying a 10 package tortilla um, bag uh, this also says that it's the large. Well, obviously there are larger tortillas than, than this because you can have them for a burrito. You don't want them super huge. This is the good size that you'd like and comparing it to my hand. Um, I would probably, again, I probably need a little less than two packages of these. So maybe anywhere from 16 to 18 tortillas. Um, I'm just going to be making the 10 that's in this package and whatever I have left over for my filling I'll probably just freeze um, just so that way I'm not making more than what we're going to be eating. Okay, I went ahead and took a um, casserole pan uh, baking dish. This is about 9 by 13 inches. I went ahead and sprayed it with some cooking spray. And now I'm going to take my tortillas out of the package and I'm going to go ahead and stuff them. I might take um, just a regular spoon um, out of the drawer, you know, a large one, and take two or three scoops full and put them in the tortillas. And here's my nicely blended mix and I've gone ahead and scooped it onto my tortilla. Again, it's three large spoonfuls. So by rolling it, I'm just going to press one end in, going to fold over one side and I'm just going to kind of roll it 
a tight roll. You make sure nothing falls out the top. I may even tuck that top part in as well. And then I'm going to put it inside the greased bake sheet or bake baking pan here with the fold side down. I'm going to do that until I have the whole thing filled. So now I have all of my tortillas rolled up. Um, again, I used a package of 10, which fits nicely into this 9x13 um, size pan. But um, I still have some filling left over. And again, I'll probably freeze that. Um, it freezes just fine in a plastic container. And you can always take it out and you know make a little bit of sauce, and then you'll have enchiladas for another time. It's always a great freezer meal. So again, you know, this has been sitting here um, with no heat on, waiting just a few minutes while I rolled those. And really, um, if I feel that it's too thick, I can always add more water to it. Um, it's really up to you. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pour it on top of the enchiladas. Again, if you have any leftover shredded cheese, this would be the time to put it on top. Then after your 15 to 20 minutes in the oven, then you'll want to wait um, a little bit before they cool to serve them. Um, but you are all done. It's good with a side of Spanish rice, some guacamole, um, chips and salsa. You're ready to go for a nice meal. And this is what's for dinner.